talking about today. She is both um, an artist who has a, a very strong publishing record, which means an image, cre a, a international image, image creation. And she also has a strong gallery, us representing her originals and her limited editions all over the world. So, um, and there's, and we also have some examples that we're gonna be talking about later, um, both in the, in the, I think in the slideshow, yes, Anastasia, and also physically here. Absolutely. Uh, we have um, several images as examples of what we will, will be talking about next. And um, I think I have uh, shown some um, following slides already. Um, let's proceed then. So this uh, very uneven and difficult path from an emerging artist to the status of an established artist. And this is a very simple diagram, extremely simplistic. I think in real life, this journey would be a mad zigzag here and there in a sinusoid. Um, how, how one can go, what, how one can navigate this seas and uh, this rough waters. What an artist, um, what happens to an artist within the art market, within the realm of the galleries, the shows and everything. Obviously, um, it's solo, show, it's solo shows, it's group shows, uh, it's sales, the most important thing, um, just because we're talking about art business. It's licensing, publishing, art fairs, biennales, collaborations, commissions, auctions, museum representation, a very important and desired phenomena in the life of every, or not every, but many, artists. Um, this, uh, these events, can these days be managed and created and navigated by artists themselves? We have internet, we have Instagram, we have social media, all the platforms of the major platforms are now online. So if an artist has time and skills and is willing to work for themselves and navigate the world themselves, they absolutely can. And amazing initiatives such as Artist Support Pledge and numerous um, galleries and artist unions have appeared on the market. And we do see that sometimes, and quite often these days, artists can be very much independent and, and can develop their practice in parallel with developing their market. But I do know from experience and I do know from conversations with different artists that for a true creative person, the commercial side of things and the promotional side of things and the marketing side of things is of course time consuming. And, and I it's, why, it's why I think this is one of the, the reasons we wanted to have this conversation is to, is, and, and to point that out, Anastasia, that yes, Absolutely. artists, so more than ever because of the technology we have, yes, artists can reach out and they can be promoting themselves. But the whole purpose uh, you know, is of a gallerist or to have gallerist representation is that so many of the things about promotion, about administration, about logistics, about the relationships, um, talking about money, frankly, uh, is really where the the gallery representation or or even maybe sometimes collectives can come in. And so that the what we feel strongly about is we, we kind of put ourselves in the position of the historical gallerist. What was Ken Byler? You know, what 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 did uh, Duran Ruel do? You know, all Leo Castelli, he's my hero. And 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 a lot of what the gallery does um, is, is kind of agent manager, but freeing the artist to, to be more creative and to be able to work on their practice. Um, and I think this, but this graph, I think is just so, it just says it all in a very simple way, because those, those things on the, on the right are what every established artist is going for really. Um, 
well, not necessarily because they also obviously want to fulfillment in their in their practice. But if they are, we're talking about the art market here. So those are the things that are they're important. And um, I think it's really interesting the graph putting group shows first and then solo shows. I think that's something very, I think that's very wise and that's very helpful. That can be a real learning curve for, for artists. Um, it can also be a real learning curve for collectors. Absolutely. But I think we're going to talk about that a little more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think the next question, you've just very wisely said that A, an artist wants to have more time on their hands doing the art creating, working, researching, and putting themselves in the artwork. They sometimes don't have money, and it's very daunting to talk about money. It's very difficult for many of us, let alone artists, to make a sale, to talk to the, cost, to, to the client, to discuss a price, an offer with the client. This is, and basically, to keep the relationship alive and um, and worth, worthwhile with a client because a client for a gallery and correct me uh, if I'm wrong but something tells me I'm not a client for a gallery is not just someone who comes in who buys acquires something and then goes away a client is a whole narrative it's a story of a relationship it's a story quite often of a build-up of a collection and it's a story of a relationship of three persons, the client, the gallerist, and the artist. Yes, and, and, and I think we're going to do, um, later in the Zoom program, we're, going to, we're actually gonna do a whole series on collectors making a difference, um, which will be very, I think, very interesting for our audience as well, because we, we, um, we re really, like I think all good galleries, we, we really value um, all our relationships with, with collectors small, large, emerging, established, um, it's vital. Um, and I think maybe there's one other thing we should, we should just talk about while we're on your graph, because it's, so, uh, it's so interesting, is the, the thing you kind of put out on kind of like outlying licensing is kind of outside, auctions kind of outside. So um, why don't we talk a little bit about auctions and then we'll go into the licensing and publishing because we're going to use Deborah as an example, yeah. um, but I think it's um, I think it's very useful at this point when we're looking at all the opportunities that the get the artists would have uh, through the art art market and the art world. Auctions is something that um, that that could be its own Zoom on its own. What absolutely? Because what is you know what um, that is something that's a goal of so many different artists to be to be in auctions and to be valued that way. Why? Because obviously an auction is, you know, is a market. It's a, it's a market that you can identify and that you can see. So it's like a stock market. The, the interesting thing about an auction for emerging artists is that it tends to be fashion led. And, and sometimes that can work so well for the artists that they can start in, in, in it at auction and do really well, continue that, sustain that, and, and have it, you know, a fabulous career alongside their gallery representation, maybe museum shows, etc. Other times it's very risky because it, it needs the market to sustain itself. And there's been many examples of artists that, that just can't sustain and then they get flipped, which is there's a flipping mechanism where they collectors buy them and then flip them. So, um, but that's maybe something, you know, let's see how our audience reacts to today. Maybe our audience will say, oh, maybe you could do a whole thing on auctions and we can get someone in from Christie's and Sotheby's or Phillips. Oh, that's you know, so good. You know, and have a talk about that. But I think we should, we, we're not gonna, that is something very, very interesting um, um, about the art world. But then the licensing and publishing is something that, we're going to talk about now and I think uh we I think we can go what's the time I think we should go right into that yes the only thing I wanted to say is obviously this way from emerging to established with all these stops and um milestones on the way 
affects the artist's prices. Ideally, the price only grows with each and every step of the way, with each and every exhibition, art uh, group show, solo show, Biennale, obviously prices grow. One question only, is it all, I mean, it's a market, a free market, and we're free to assign a number to an artwork, a price to an artwork. But would we be able to just pick a price that we would like to sell an artwork at, Cynthia? Or should we kind of test the market and see what the market can sustain? Are you asking uh, the question of how do we, how do we- yes. um, How do we know that this price is justified? So how do we set prices or how do we advise on pricing? Both. Yeah, that, that again, that could be a Zoom on its own, but um, um, the best way I think to speak, to think about pricing is, um, you know, what is the market bearing? That's one side because uh, I'm, some of you may know I was a former economist. Um, but the other thing is to look at where you are in, in your career, uh, if we're talking about artists, where they are in their career, uh, what they have achieved so far, um, what, what, kind of, um, uh, what kind of financial input is required for their art. In other words, they, they, their studio, their materials, um, and, and then, you know, have a good gallerist advisor that you can speak to. Um, art colleges also help with this and look at comparatives and then kind of look at what, what your colleagues are selling, a, you know, a similar um, artworks for in the emerging sense. And then make sure that it's, you know, it's a, it's a good af affordable price, um, I think is always very good for, for, for an emerging artist to be affordable and to be able to justify the pricing. Then I, I think it's going to be um, a question of when, you know, when the artist is moving along in their career, um, how, you know, basically how, again, comparatively, comparing to the other artists that are, are, are working in a, in a similar field. The, you know, the outlier to this is, as we were saying, the auction. Because if, a, if an artist is, is picked up by a massive gallery, for example, and then has, a, has some very successful auction, um, auction no. and, and, and develops an auction record, yeah. that's different. You know, so that is like, gonna be like the graph is gonna go one way. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and, and pricing is, is really important. And, um, and I think we're gonna talk about that a little bit now with yes. concrete examples. Yes, absolutely. Uh, on the example of Deborah's a party, a fantastic artwork. Shush, a very famous artwork. This is uh, the details of the original acrylic on board. And you see the very impressive price range for um, this artwork of 2008. And the reason why this artwork is now worth, yes, this is Cynthia showing us the artwork on the cover Hello. of the catalog. What's the reason of such a price? It's because the artwork has at some point been picked up by the IKEA publishing team. And it's been published in millions of copies now, I believe. Mm -hmm. So how does publishing, well, some, some people say publishing is just basically giving away your art. It's just throwing it away out there. Some people say publishing is, an, is amazing because it serves as an entry point into an artist's body of work. It allows you to have the image, the, the vision of an artist at an affordable price if you can't allow yourself to acquire an original or a limited edition print. So we are now kind of you know, touching several subjects here. Original art- Maybe move to the, show, the, show the limited yeah. edition as well. Limited edition, here you go. It's an edition of 12. It means that this print has only been done in 12 copies. The price is very, very different, 12,000 pounds. 
as compared to 350,000 pounds for the original artwork. But let me say something is yeah. that the, but the limited edition silkscreen print is, is very limited. Yes. So I think that is, is something that we have to discern, you know, it's discern, discern between um, an open edition or, you know, a, a, like a, a print. Yeah. So there's, so there's very, so when, it, when we say limited edition silk screen print, it's, it's a different form of printing. Um, and that, and it will have a very small availability, but it's still not the original. Yes. So, and, and I think that this is a very, very good example of what has, ha you know, what has happened, what can happen to an artist. Because Deborah as a party, for example, was starting her, had really started her publishing career before we represented her, but it exploded around the same time as we started to represent her. Uh, so, um, it really, it really is, this one is, is great. There was, apparently this has sold as many copies as the green, the green girl. That's really famous. Um, Chinese print. girl. Yeah. Really famous Chinese print. So, um, this is a great comparison, I, I think. And, and when you, when you were talking about Ikea, um, I think you're also referring to the fact that it was advertised all over the television, wasn't it? Yes, exactly. It's always, so, always in the kitchen at parties, yeah. Yes, when we were talking to Deborah earlier about the phenomenon of the um, open editions of the Ikea prints, because she's done several with them. And every single print that they've picked, single artwork that they've picked up for production and editioning was very successful. Debra's told me that IKEA buyers were always looking at last year results, at the results of the previous prints, and then selected the amounts and the sizes of the following editions to kind of continue in this path. And they were all very successful. But Shush was the most successful of them because it's appeared on TV, and we know how TV works. But maybe show the original again. Yeah, just a moment. Here it is. Um, so there's no, and you notice there's no air bubble in that one. Yeah. So it's slightly different. And that's the other thing. Um, it will be, many of the originals will be, you know, slightly different. Um, would, and, and you know, this, this is a tiny, you know, it's 24 by 24 inches, I do inches, but it's not even, um, you know, it's not even a meter. Yeah. It's 61 but, by 61. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not enormous. It's not very big. And I, I think there's another thing to say about this, because I, I know there's some questions in the chat room. So by the way, we're going to, obviously, we're going to take loads of questions at the end. Yes, but we'll um, something else to, um, to, to illustrate this is that when many times um, different people, friends, collectors, family members uh, would travel around the world, they would see various images of Deborah. And this gives you a really good example. My daughter moved to LA for the first time after she finished her, um, her, her university in New York. And she called me immediately and said, you're not going to believe this, but some, uh, I'm moving into some, a place that I found on Craigslist and Deborah has a party's painting is in my bathroom. And it's shush, how could that be? And obviously I knew it wasn't the original. And she took a photo, she said, no, it is, it is. And it was, um, it was a print from, from Ikea, but that was in Los Angeles. And then someone else contacted me from Australia. And then someone else was in Italy. But so that's the reach, I guess, of, of, you know, of these, of publishing and, and of reproductions. Yeah. Deborah says there isn't a place in the world where her artworks have not been published. <laughs> so uh, here is the limited edition again. Another limited edition. Uh, gossip, a big one. This one's bigger than, than the shush. Um, smaller edition size, only 10, 10 copies have been done. 
uh, six we see it hanging on the wall. Sorry, yes. Yeah, so can. Cynthia can now be can now show us. Yes, here is the one of the the few left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, addition of ten. Yeah. What did you say? So and and maybe what we can should we talk about the wall? Then? Yes, let's because talk about the wall because PowerPoint is interesting, but what's in your home yeah. is okay. much more enticing. So Tell how do more. I can I can I switch it to? Yes, you can switch it. And you can turn the camera to the wall yeah. so everyone will okay. see. Perfect. Okay, so let's talk about the wall because this wall really will illustrate kind of what some of the things we're talking about. Yeah. So here's here's gossip, um, which I, I just love it. I just think it's amazing. This is a limited edition. It's only an edition of 10. Pricing on that, 6,000 pounds. Next to it, we have Big Bong. Okay, so Bing Bong, is is an incredible painting this is an original painting acrylic on board that deborah executed in 2005 and this painting along with several others were published in the form of greeting cards and posters by habitat in what they call the dating series so it's bing bong it was bring it was May I Come In, Slam, um, Woman Putting On Her Lipstick, um, and a really incredible body of work. And also then, Bing Bong was also made into a limited edition silkscreen print of 50. Yes, and I'm yes. showing now the slide, but the difference between the limited edition silkscreen print for Bing Bong, edition of 50, price is four thousand eight hundred pounds and the original is three hundred thousand pounds yes again so. the power of a huge edition of a of a, of an open edition which habitat greeting cards was gave and justified the price for the original and then, um, and and the um, and the addition of fifty, we still have availability. It's absolutely Thank gorgeous. You. Obviously, the artist um, has signed and numbered them. They, you know, they are valuable. Um, they were created because the other thing about, uh, and I'm sure many people on this call know this, but I'll just say it anyway, that you know, with a silkscreen print, um, every one of those silkscreen prints has to be done at the same time. Yes, because they have to. Be, uh, you, they have to be done so that the colors are matching, um, and and so they're they're they're. It's not a, you know, it's not a printing press. You know, it's a real artistic uh, creation, really. So then, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to move here. Um, this is one of my absolute favorites of of Tevra. It's called Side Exit, but. I like to call it exit stage left, <laughs> you know, like something out of the theater. Yeah. Where is he going? What is he doing? Is he running from someone? You know, has he done something naughty? Um, and that was created in 2004. And this is a unique original artwork on this incredible paper. That's the other thing, paper. What is paper? Paper is so different for an artist because these papers are, you know, they're actually really heavy. Um, but I just think this is an this has just so much movement. Um, it's 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 brilliant artwork. And then the one below it is called Femme Fatale, and this you know it's one woman putting on her nail varnish. You know how many of us do that sometimes? Um, I I this is I did I did my nails today the first time since lockdown I must say. But um, um but I, this is another one. This is unique. It's an original artwork absolutely gorgeous but the pricing on them you're going to say well wait a minute that's eight thousand that's original that's ten and a half that's original but these have not been published and um, will they be published that's Probably. a question that's a question. you know and and but that's i mean the, the artist that we're talking about has an, a huge body of work so they're at any time her work might be published, you know, a, a piece of her work might be published, maybe not. But the are a lot of our collectors that have bought Deborah Azapati's work 
have bought originals that have not been published, uh, limited editions, and then very lucky, some of them have bought works that were not published and that have become published. Deborah but, says that she is always and very often ahead of time because she's had artworks that have been picked up for publishing five, 10, 15 years after she's created them, she's painted them. So yes, it is unpredictable and yes, an original can at some point become a fantastic investment just because a publisher selects it for yet another edition. And, um, and I think this is where we maybe could say, uh, does, I guess you could ask the question, well, does this matter? Do you, if you're an, if you're an artist and emerging or established, does it matter to you if you're published? Do you need to be published? Do you want to be? That is not, you know, that, that's really something that each artist has to decide. Um, and, exactly. and we have a question about that in the chat. I will just okay. go swiftly and to the, the question because it ties in to what Cynthia is saying. Joy is asking, did as a party get royalties or a fee from Ikea for publishing her work? Okay. Where was so, it published? On the website or in the catalog? Okay, so I can comment on that, um, Joy. Uh, basically how the pub, I, I don't know how every publishing or publishing deal or publisher works, but if it's going to be done properly, the artist has to get, you know, has an agreement and then they, they give their reproduction rights and that would be for a fee. And then, then it's all negotiated between the publisher and the artist. We, as her gallerist, we're not involved with that at all. So I don't actually know, but I do know that it's legal that they, they, that it, that it, the artist gets rights and gets money. But, but how that's negotiated, you know, that's that really, um, that's that's up to that's something private, and I'm not really sure how it, it could be different for different artists. I think that's fair, a fair answer, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. As per your question, does the artist need to be published? I think it very much depends on the artist because some would love to. Some say, no, I want to only do originals and maybe limited editions, which are controlled by myself and my gallerist. Mm -hmm. I don't want any open unlimited editions. I don't want any licensing. I don't want my artwork on a beach towel or I don't know, on a t-shirt, on a sweatshirt. Some say, no, I want my work on a beach towel. I or a poster, want... or even, a, you know, because even, you know, even museums, they, yes. they have to get the, they have to get permission yes. from the artists if they're going yes. to be doing posters that, you know, and it's sold, you yes. know, for the benefit of the museum. I just wanted, I think I want to do one other thing here. I'm going to show um, yes. a, an, an interesting example of, I know we're, we're mainly talking about Deborah, but I think, I think I should, while, while I have the audience here, show the work of Twema Patti. Absolutely. Because Twema Patti now um, is also just been published. And Twema is um, 82 years old. Uh, we had her first major career, well, her, her career retrospective. Um, first ever. In in um, uh, in between lockdowns, uh, in uh, when when was that? October. It was October <laughs> last yeah. year. Yeah, October 2020. I don't even. Tiny it, week I, in October, in yeah. between lockdowns, in managed to and, jump in. And she has been she has been an artist. She graduated from art college in the 50s. Went to Belfast College of Art and then went to Central Saint Martins in the 50s, and. All this time, she's been an, a practicing artist and she has just been picked up by a publisher. And I have to say, she's thrilled. But it was, it, it's, you know, it, it took quite a long time. Will she, at her age, see any financial benefits? Who knows? But will she see maybe more recognition? Maybe. So that's another, another um, example. 
Um, should we talk about love is the answer and then open it up to questions? Let's talk about love is the answer and then let's go straight to questions because there is an exciting discussion going there and I want to make it public and okay. involve All right, everyone. I'll just, just show one, one more. One last brilliant example. So this is the print that Cynthia is showing. Yeah. Tell us. Okay, so this is is called Love is the Answer. What an amazing piece. I just, I could cry sometimes. It's so beautiful. And, and Deborah and ourselves were, were approached by, by the Winehouse family and the Winehouse Foundation for Deborah to do a beautiful painting in mem commemoration of their daughter. And the first one that you showed, that was the original painting. And we, we had the idea of, uh, that if we could do a limited edition so screen print, um, edition of 15, we could sell this and, and part of the proceeds could go to the foundation, which is what we did. And Deborah um, signed, signed the, the artwork um, alongside um, the parents of Amy Winehouse. So this is signed by all of them. And, um, and the, it's also has hand, you can probably see the platinum leaf on the earrings and that is applied but was applied by Deborah's hand. I mean she's not the silk screener she goes to a, a wonderful um, printer who does this but she, that's applied by her and um, so the the limited edition uh, that I think there's uh, some other publishing that has gone on with this but not not involving us but um, um, you know it's in it, it you know because that's the other thing frankly Sometimes with publishing, it's a great way of raising money for, for charity, because if you have more recognition, maybe more people will, will um, be willing to, uh, to, you know, to have a, a, if there's a charitable element there. Um, so, and this was a, a great, it was, this was a great initiative um, and how- The original is obviously much, 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 much more expensive. Expensive. So should we go to the questions? Let's, because let's go to the question. Yeah. So I will just quickly brief you on what's going on in the chat. Uh, Ooh, Joy so <laughs> and uh, Jay <laughs> Ellen are discussing, and Linda Smith are discussing basically the phenomena of the open edition by IKEA. There is a question: who um, who um, who brokered the relationship? You said it was direct between Deborah and IKEA. Uh, there is a question whether IKEA sells the work. Yes, IKEA sells those open edition prints, just as you say, uh, routine printing, small sum. These are not signed by the artist. These are not certified as authentic by made by Deborah. And um, the, um, the question about the market for this type of prints, is there a market for these prints, does the value increase with time by Tanya? The IKEA prints, I'm afraid, would not be that. Well, you don't know. Maybe, you don't, because maybe. It's, 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 it's um, because I think that, that open editions, I think that's another question, right? Yes. About the open editions. Yeah, I let's think maybe discuss what's the difference. Yeah, because in open editions, there can be some that are certified by Deborah. That doesn't mean they're going to be very select limited editions, but they could also have certification. Will those, uh, will they ever, I mean, the thing is, will any artist art ever go up in value? Who knows? But um, uh, I think it's more, I think we, I, I mean, really as an econ former economist, I would look at the publishing route as a way of recognition, image recognition, artist recognition, mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and I think also, I think it's really a nice democratic way of people to be able to enjoy art. You know, uh, how many people around that were on this, in the audience, you know, when they were in high school or, um, you know, in their college room or, or I, I have posters. I mean, I'm a gallerist, but I have posters for, of Monet and Morisot and, I can't afford ever, ever in my life ever afford um, any of their work. Um, so I think it's a it's a democratic, wonderful thing to do. And will it make the artist a lot of money? Probably not. 
Um, will it make the owner of an open edition print a lot of money? Probably not, but would it make the grandchild of that person money eventually? Well, maybe, because the artist originals will be finite. Yeah. The limited editions will be limited, very limited in Deborah's case. I mean, yes, there are a few that are limited editions of 50, yep. but most of them are 10 to, to 12. Yeah. So 15 max, maybe. So yeah. there's a question related to that. I wonder how does an artist or gallery now, how many prints should be published within a limited edition? That's a very good question, Marsha. Thank you. Ah, you know, when we're talking about like a silk screen or an etching. Yes, like a limited edition, edition of 15, yeah. 12. I mean, 10. I don't know. We we are very, um, it's it's interesting because um, I, I trained at, Christie's did my postgrad at Christie's and um, Anastasia uh, did hers at well, my Christie's education. She was Sotheby's Institute. And, you know, when, when we look at, you know, what is a good amount, I think to, to be able to charge, you know, to charge a, um, an amount of money that make, makes a difference to, to the artist, I think it really has to be under 20. But that's, I mean, I think if it's a really famous artist, it's that's different. You know, I think, you know, if you're, but when you're, when you're starting out and certainly the way Deborah was, cause she was starting out when she was doing her limited editions. I mean, with the more recent ones, obviously she became well known, but so yeah, I, I don't know. I think if you maybe start with 15 to 20, I think that's a, that's, that's okay. Also, if you're just starting, um, you're an emerging artist, I don't think you have a lot of budget to actually make a huge addition because it involves yeah. if investing it's proper, yeah. in the paper, yeah. in the printing, in it's all expensive. the process, in, in certification, because mm -hmm. there is also a question from Tanya, is there an authentication certificates for the original prints as well? Uh, you mean the limited edition prints, I believe, Tanya, yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. we do have certificates authentifying yes. the- And Deborah is, is with Taxmart, yes. which people should, that's another thing. There's probably in, in many other countries, I, I just can't remember the, what it's called in America, but Taxmart does do international. Yes. And they're, they're a, 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 a focal, they're a, uni, like they're a universal collective agency, I guess, for, um, for authentication. Mm -hmm. and, and that's super important. Yes. There is a question also from Linda. Did you publish the limited edition? So how it works, the artist, in our case, Deborah, works with a publishing firm, company, who does prints for many different artists. She decides at some point, okay, I want to print this artwork, produce this original artwork in a limited edition. We establish the amount of copies within the edition, the edition size, we establish the pricing, then she goes to the publisher and she controls the process. Oh, no, no, I think they're asking about the... limited editions. Yep, Is sorry. the question limited? I think the question yes, was yes, limited yes. edition. No, that's different. Limited, yeah. No, but that's not Tell with us. the publisher. No, no, no I mean, the, uh, the guys who Deborah publishes with, the, um, the um, the Italian, uh, the lovely Italian man who name I, whose name I always forget. Oh, you mean jealous? Pr no, they're not publishers, Jell they're printers. Yeah. Printers. Yeah. Print jealous. Printers. That, yeah. She that's uses jealous, which are great. They're yeah. great. Jealous, yeah. yes. So then they, they produce the prints under her supervision. Yes. It's not us, it's not the gallery, it's the artist. But, but we it could be. But are we in could. charge of. We, we could. We, we if could. we had, we don't. We, un, we, un, um, we don't have a publishing press, um, uh, I mean, a printing press, sorry, a, a print, we're not a printer, but um, yeah. there are many different, uh, uh, galleries can be both. I think maybe that's the question. Um, but in, 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 the, in our case, we're, we're not. But she, but Deborah is working with, I'd say one of the top um, yes. printers. Joy, you're asking, when you're saying publisher, do you mean a printer? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, Rosen, uh, there are companies who do the open edition, the big editions of prints. 
I believe IKEA does the the prints themselves, produces them themselves. But that but in case would of, be, yeah. But they would have her. So you know, in in the case of someone like Deborah or many other artists, they would have someone that controls and represents yes, them course, on the publishing side, kind of like how we represent her on the gallery side. Yes. Yes. Uh, but then and, the printer, such as Jealous Prints, they are not the publisher. <laughs> They no. just there's print. someone who was asking about a national law yes um there is uh there is a discussion also a very important one by the way if some someone acquires uh who decides if the original artworks can be published after they are sold the artist of the owner of the artwork and then um the artists in the comments discuss that oh. sometimes um a publisher can take the artwork from online and then print. No, that's illegal. illegal. That's illegal. That's illegal. That's illegal. illegal. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that um, from what I know business wise and um, not just, you know, related to Azapati, but generally um, the unless the artist, whether that artist is a musician, visual artist, you know, writer, whatever, they own their copyright they own their mm -hmm. rights. Now, if they decide to sell that right, um, it, it would normally be on a limited basis. Like Forbes, for example, Shush was allowed to be published on an open edition. That doesn't, but the, but the owner of that is still the artist. Um, so how, you know, but you could, I suppose you could, if you wanted to sell your rights fully to to I, I don't think many visual artists would do that but you could but if someone is just picking up or the own like say the person that bought um uh the original of um yes we sold the original of of gossip for instance ages ago um that that client that collector cannot sell the rights to that piece they own that work, but they don't own the rights to reproduce it, if that makes any sense. What if I, uh, what if I acquired Femme Fatale? It's not published, it's the original. Mm -hmm. I'm buying it, it's hanging on my wall, and then a publisher says to Deborah, Deborah, we would love to reproduce that. And she says, oh, but the lovely Anastasia has just acquired it. So will the publisher then come to me and say, can we print? can we publish or no, they will go no. via Deborah anyway. Yeah, you don't own anything. You own the original work. Yes. But you don't own any rights yeah. to reproduction. But so, yes, it you, can happen. But you do get the right to sell that work if you wanted to probably at in the future, a lot more than you bought it for. Yes, yes, because this lovely fan fatale would be, her market would be growing if Deborah and her publisher decide. Ah, now someone has asked a question about timing. Yes. I have to leave, but thank you for the trouble to organize. And, oh, yeah. Rights um, are limited in time. After so many years, it's expired. Um, ah. Now, what is that? Isn't that a legal? Isn't that a like a legal question with um, artist reproduction? Yeah, artist resale rights. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, isn't it seventy years? I think depends on the country. Mm -hmm. Depends yeah. on the country, and also it's very important if we talk not about limited edition prints, but any. I think any um, any artwork created, signed by the artist. Some artists sign with agencies who take care of artist resale rights. Yeah. So then a living artist will get a percentage of uh, the amount for which the artwork will have been sold at the secondary market. And this is yeah. a very important thing to do. But that's a whole another But discussion. that's a whole another you story, have, secondary yeah. market. We're now only talking about the primary market yeah. because we as a gallery only deal with the primary market. But that is a but that is an interesting question about the secondary market, and it's why artist resale rights was established. In obviously, it started in Europe because so many of the artists' families of those very famous artists received nothing on resale, 
-hmm. nothing in 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 the when as the art was increasing in in, in value yeah. so i think that's how it was it was called what the suite and that came in in europe and then it, it came yeah came in in um in britain uh but i it's it's a complicated thing it's like a 70 year rule i think there's also the same kind of um rule in terms of uh, music rights and yeah um, yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joy That's says, I understand the role of a publisher for books. Is it analogous for art prints? In a way, in a way it is, because yes, publishers select a portfolio of prints that they deal with. Then very interesting one um, about the artwork it itself. Do you have appraisals? Who set the price for the artwork and its real value? Well, the artwork doesn't have a real value. What's real value? Is it the canvas, the acrylics and um, and the board? And how do you measure the time of the artist? How do you measure the energy, the talent, the creativity, the gift of the artist that's been given to the canvas? How do you then calculate what exact percentage such or such show? It's so subjective. That's it's the thing. very subjective. Yeah, so very subjective. subjective. And that's why I guess that's why the auction market is such a great parameter. Yes. If you're on the auction market, yes. because that is a real, it's a real value. But if you're not in the auction market, what what we as gallerists do, um, well, I can give it an example. Like many of my clients would come to me and say, "Oh, I'm interested in this artist, like artist A. Um, you don't represent them." Um, I was told the price is X. So what would I do? The first thing I would do is look and see if they have an auction record. That's the first thing. If they don't, then I would see who are their galleries. And then I would call them and say, would you be willing to let me know, you know, what your price range is? And, um, and so I have an idea of um, what the, the value is, because that is actually the only way to, to give a true value is well, what what has the what what has the what has the artist achieved, um, and and that won't necessarily be museum uh, acquisitions because typically an artist would um, there would be a well not not always but there would be some sort of uh, charity charity benefit when you when you are donating or being acquired by by a museum. I think, well, that's been an amazing discussion. We have <laughs> two minutes left. <laughs> so interesting. So, um, so maybe, maybe we can take, yeah. yes, a couple more. Please write in the chat. Uh, while, uh, yes, okay. Screen printing can be mass produced. Uh, does the increase in number of artworks on the market decrease its value? Mm -hmm. Do you mean, Joy, do you mean the decrease, the, the decrease in the value of the original artwork? Yes. Okay. Screen printing can be mass produced. Um, mm, yeah, but, but that's an interesting question. Screen printing. It depends what kind of printing. Yeah. I think that's, I guess that's one of, the, that's probably a whole discussion in itself. Printing could be another whole Zoom. But when you say screen printing can be reproduced, do you mean the original, sil the original, the, the silk screen print that was printed by a reputable publisher signed by the artist, et cetera, could then be taken somewhere and reproduced? Yeah, so that would not have value. So unless the artist themselves said, okay, I'm willing to allow that printer and I'm willing to, and, and to be really honest, I don't think anyone we would work with would do that because yes, it would decrease the value. You're absolutely right. I think last question, two questions in one, and it's a whole other topics, to be honest. What would be your advice for emerging artists to gain recognition to, became, to become an established artist? Question number one. Question number two, what makes an artist's statement stand out? Ooh, that's two mm. huge ones. Um, Cynthia, do you want to answer the first one and I will answer about the statement maybe? <laughs> um, 
Okay, so, so as I was just answering someone on the chat. Sorry, say that again, okay. sorry. What would you, be your advice for emerging artists to gain recognition to become an established artist? The advice? Yes. Okay, and there, and there was a second part to that question? The second no? question is what makes an artist's statement stand out? Pick one okay. and they'll answer the other one. <laughs> okay, I, I think I'll do the first one. Okay. Um, I think that, you know, to go from emerging to established, um, just like in life, there's a journey. Um, just like in a career, there's a journey. In relationships, there's a journey. Um, so within that journey, um, you know, you can be an emerging artist, frankly, at any age. We, I gave the example earlier of Twema Patti being published at the age of 82. Um, so you can be an emerging artist at any age, but to become an established artist, um, I think you, you, you have to be extremely serious, very focused, um, very much true to your art and really just pray and hope that you are gonna have a relationship with your representation that values all the things that you are. Because if you get that right, as long as that, that representative, whether it's a gallery or an advisor or a collective are, are incredibly behind you and really believe in you, they'll do everything they can to make, you know, help you reach your goal. But that's, that's, you know, that is really the key. There's no magic. I think it's just, you know, it's just, it's, it's, um, a little bit of hard luck. work, <laughs> daily yeah. hard work. Yeah, a little bit of luck. A little bit of luck, uh, yeah. living time and space for your practice. And unfortunately, great communication and networking. This is something that you can't, yeah. Yeah. you can't miss. And I'm going into the second question about the artistic statement, communication. Your art is communication. Your artistic statement is communication about your art. If you want to know what kind of artistic statement stands out, um, again, there is no specific recipe, but we as gallerists immediately see when a statement um, is either done at the very last moment or is not really well thought through. We do know that it's extremely tough to talk about your art in words because you normally think in visuals. Artists are very visual. And we have so many artists who say, I can't put what I feel into words. I'm doing my artworks. I, do it, I paint, I take photos, I create ceramics, I do sculpture. I can't create a piece of written text about what I think I'm doing. But uh, it's very important to sometimes think and try to reflect on what are you trying to say with your art? Where is your research coming from? Is it authentic? Is it sincere? Is it, can, can you explain what you're doing to a six-year-old child? I think if you can, then your statement is fine. If it's I think, can child, I just, can I just yes, jump in there? Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Jay Allen uh, just said, uh, better to get someone else who knows you really well to write your statement. That is a great, if, if you know, re that's a great- Sometimes can word. help yeah. tremendously well. Yeah, yeah. It's someone, but they have to believe in you. They can't be like, oh, it, it's gonna be a spin because yeah. the, the spin aspect, that's PR. And that's where your, really your representation, whether it's your gallery advisor or whatever, they come in. Yeah. But I, I, I have to say that it's so, so, so true. Everything Anastasia says, I totally agree. And then the one thing I would say she probably wouldn't say this because she's the head of frontline communication. But golden I do dust, say, golden yeah, dust person. Yeah, golden <laughs> dust person. So I would say, and I do say this to the artist: look, even if you think that what you're sending us is absolute grammatically incorrect and just horrible, it has no you know punctuation. We don't care because what's the most important thing is to have anything from the artist from their own mouth from their own hand that says what their, what, their, um, what their aim is, what their artist means to them. And you know, when we look at the young masters, for instance, well, that's been incredible 
because we 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 get applications where we have the last time in 2019 we had 850 applications and we said to every single um, artist that applied you have to say something about your art we don't care if it's in grammatical form we don't care but no. it has to be something from you because then you 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 can look at it and say ah okay that's very this interesting is, this is what they're coming from because then i can brush it up but i have to know where your roots are yeah do exactly. all the women to finish off do all the women tend to be emerging now asks linda smith yes they are finally yes 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 of course <laughs> yes and a, a, a really relevant point there is that um, so many of the artists that not just us, but we are working with many um, mat mature women. Um, and it's partly because women now have realized, well, I've, I've had my other domestic or, or have had things that they, they had to do that um, required um, so much of their time. And then I think after maybe a certain age, maybe after 50, 60, women don't have as much of that demands on them so they can go back to probably who they were when they when they started their career or their mature life and um that needs to be recognized and that needs to and it and it is and i'm we're so behind that we're so happy about that i think we have to wrap it up uh I'm afraid we have to wrap it up <laughs> because we'd love to keep on talking with you. There are some wonderful ideas for our future talks. I love the idea that Joy is suggesting to show examples of a number of works by an artist accompanied by this statement. And Cynthia and I have long been thinking about doing something for the emerging artists specifically, and this will be announced separately, I think, at some point. Uh, so please, 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 Keep an eye on our Instagram, sign up for the newsletter. You know where to find us. You know our website, you know everything. No, we don't forget. We're not forgetting all the men, dearest Mike. We're not. We're no, not. of course not. No, no. no. Absolutely not. <clears throat> oh my God, I, we're, we're both men lovers as well. So. Yes, yes. Yeah. How do we <laughs> sign up for the newsletter? I am typing the web address of the gallery in the chat so everyone will be able to go and click and sign up for the newsletter please do please follow us on instagram and uh let's keep... do we say do we need to say our instagram handles or will they find us i will write everything in the chat right now yes please yes because we 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 like to grow and we we grow our followers organically yes we that's how we do it yes so this is the website. And I think our Instagram, both Young Masters and the gallery, it's, it's interesting. We try to, obviously we, we need to promote ourselves and our artists, but we, we do have a lot of content in there, particularly on Young Masters, because uh, there's about 200 alumni now. Yes. And you can, you can, you can get so much information for- All artists what should different people are doing. follow the Young Masters. Yeah. Or prize mm -hmm. Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a lovely, lovely day or evening or whatever you're having. And we hope to see you soon. And